Welcome back traders. This is Sandra with Trading Made Simple and today's video is on watch list. I think you're going to like it. If you want to learn about our new school community, check out uh, the link in the description below. But here we go. Welcome back traders. This is Sandra with Trading Made Simple. Today we're going to talk about watch lists on Thinkorswim. And interestingly enough, you know, I got this as a request and I think it's because the way that Thinkorswim, if you're brand new to it, you know, there's just a lot of little tiny buttons. And so today we're going to talk about the watch list button. And what you're going to do is you're going to come right over here to this line and you can see where this side menu basically lights up when you hover over it. And there's a little arrow right here. So I'm going to click on that and then there's this side area and it's for your gadgets. Now typically speaking, when you sign up with Thinkorswim and you open this, you're going to have something here. And if you don't, that's okay. If you already have something, you can just go over here and say detach a gadget. In this case, since I don't have anything, I'm going to hit this plus down here and then I'm just going to hit watch list. And as you can see, any watch list pops up. Now I have a whole bunch, but I want to talk to you about how you can get different watch lists here as an example. So if we click right here where the watch list is, you'll see that there are personal watch lists that you can create. And a lot of these you can actually create from the scan function of Thinkorswim. So if you're on Thinkorswim, you know how to do a scan, you can actually create that as a watch list and you can save it as a watch list. So that when you come down here, you can go to personal and whatever you saved it as, you can then pull it back up. They also have, which is a very nice addition here, is that they have public watch lists. Now these are created by Thinkorswim. And so all you need to do is you can just review these, whether you want all ETFs, a percentage change in gainers, losers, looking at the Dow Jones Industrial Average here. If we keep going, you can see futures gap down, gap up. These are ones that are already created that you can actually just click on. One of my favorites that I like to use is the market maker move stocks. These are all like the large cap stocks that you'll know. You know, Visa, look, Apple, Microsoft, Google, Amazon, NVIDIA, Meta, Tesla. I mean, aren't these all the big boys, right? This is what everyone's trading. This is great because I just find that most of these stocks right here are the movers and the shakers. They are the ones that have a lot of options flow in them and they have narrow spreads. Now every once in a while you'll find one down here that you know I won't typically trade but for the most part these are the big hitters and this is a nice watch list to just bring up on your menu if you don't already have a couple watch lists saved. Now you can also just go down a little bit and say create a watch list. You can just create your own if you wanted to. And then also you can create a scan query and that's what I was referring to. Now you can either do that from here or you can go into your scan function and create it right here. Uh, but in any event they made it so this is nice. Now let me just tell you a couple of the features here on the watch list. By the way, if you guys are liking this type of content please like, subscribe and share. I really do appreciate it. So you see this little clip icon. It says symbol link when you hover over it. And what that does is, is instead of you having to, you know, put it on Apple and then over here type Apple, what you could do is you can just link this watch list to a color. So let's say I, I link it to red one. And then I come over here and I link the chart to red one. So now all of a sudden, if I hit Apple, you see how it just automatically changes for you. If I hit Microsoft, Google, you can see that all of these charts are just automatically pop up for you without any issues whatsoever. And so this makes it really nice. So you could actually have a uh, different watch lists that are, are linked to different colors and that's how you could do that. So that I think is a really nice feature that you should know about if you don't already know it. The other thing too is that on the watch list, if, if you don't want to go here and actually pick a watch list, you can actually just based on where it's located, just start clicking the down arrow and you can go through all the watch lists that are already created from the public sector, but you're going to have to go through quite a lot. I would rather just go through the public section and then as an example 
S&P 500, that's perfect as well. You could use that too. So just to show you, you know, those are the functions there. I think that I pretty much covered. The other thing that you, and you can see that you have some, as far as like what you could utilize for your watch list. They have social sentiment, what your account positions are. It'll create a watch list based on what your ongoing positions are at right now. And so this has a lot of features that you should uh, take a look at and investigate. I think you might like it. Once you start looking through here and start clicking, you're going to see how valuable that the watch list is when you get through here. Now, let's say you want to add another gadget. So what you can do is, is instead of having just one watch list, you can actually have two or you can have other gadgets. So let's say I say, let's add a gadget. And you'll notice that on the drop down menu, it's detach and switch but really, and delete, but they don't have add. And add is down here where this plus sign is. And so if we click it, you can see that I can add another watch list. And you can see another watch list pops up. And if I hover over the top of it, I can make more room to add another gadget as an example. So let's say I want to add another gadget and I can use uh, Trader TV. There's Trade Flash. If you're not familiar with Trade Flash, I have a video on that. Uh, this is interesting because this basically is giving you Squawk News, but written. If you've heard of Squawk News, it's basically what stocks are doing real time. And that's exactly what it is. And it's just about what's happening in the stock market letting you know big orders that are coming in, option, unusual options, etc. So you might want to check out Trade Flash. What's another good one? Let me see what another good one is. Sometimes you, you know, maybe you want to watch the news. There's actually a news station in here, uh, Trader TV. If you go to uh, Live News, you can type in a symbol as an example, and it'll give you the latest on that. So if something just came up as an example you were looking for Tesla earnings instead of you know looking at a, a number of different uh, websites you could just go right over here type in Tesla and the latest news will be there so this is a nice feature to have just for some quick information let's see what other cool gadgets they have calculator they have a scratch pad up here that I've used as well let's see if I can find that you might like the scratch pad Yes, and you can see, you know, I'm putting down my notes for, you know, what this week looks like and what, you know, tickers that I'm I'm looking at. So that's kind of neat as well. So a lot of cool features on this box right here. You just have to be able to find it, right? That's with everything with Thinkorswim. Now let me go into customizations for your watch list really quick. So if you go right over here to this gear icon, this is where you can actually customize your watch list. And you can see that each one you can customize them differently. And what I mean by customize is that if you hit customize, you'll see that you have some options here. And a lot of these are actually studies that you have. So you could pull up volume, you could pull up, if you have a special indicator that identifies pre-market high-low, you could pull that up. And what that does is it actually creates a different column for you. So let me get rid of these and I'll show you how that works really quick. I don't want to know the bid and the ask. I typically just like to know what the last price is. Let's say that I also want the volume of the stock. You can see that volume is right here, so I'll go ahead and add that as a column. And then um, I do have a pre-market special column. Let me see if I can find that. I'll pull that. And then we also have some custom indicators. And I have a dynamic watch list. Let's see if I can find that. I put it under. There we go. Here's a dynamic watch list. I'll just add that so you could see it. So now I've added some special things to create columns. And now you'll notice, let me bring this down right here and I can make this wide and I can also adjust the columns right so here's the last here's volume and of course you could go back to the menu item and change them around if you wanted to so here we go so now you can actually and then also you can do a, a column sort in this case I've I've made all of these as a, a buy signal as an example that I'm getting from our custom watch list and so you can see where all the pre-market stocks have broken out of their pre-market highs are all green. The ones that are black have not broken out. 
the ones that are red broke down from their pre-market lows. And so, and you can see volume, so you can sort by volume, low and high, and then also the last price. So you can do a different customization for different watch lists by using that customized feature. So that's awfully nice to be able to use. All you have to do is find it, right? And you find it right there where that little gear icon is. So we just hit that and then you can start to customize your list from here. If you have some custom scripts, then if you, let me see if I can do that again, I'll come over to custom, come to the drop down and do custom quotes. And these are typically ones that you actually created yourself. So they'll have some blank ones if you're new to Thinkorswim. It'll say like, you know, custom folder number one, two, three, four, five. You can see I've used all mine. So what you can do is actually click on there and make a new one from an old one, but you'll have plenty of blank customized folders that you can then create so that you can make custom columns is what that's for if you have some special scripts. Okay, so I've given you a rundown on the watch list. It's a great feature to use. Uh, I hope this helped. If you have any questions, my contact is in the description below.